The U.S. is shattering records with the number of new daily COVID-19 infections. The nation recorded more than one million cases Monday, while the seven-day average is nearing half a million infections per day. It's the most any country has ever reported. The fast-spreading Omicron variant is being blamed for nearly all of these cases. To fight this unprecedented surge, President Biden says the government is doubling its purchase of Pfizer's COVID-19 treatment pill. Meanwhile, there's continued high demand for PCR and rapid tests around the country. Omar Villafranca reports from Fort Worth, Texas. Omicron is omnipresent. The CDC announcing today it now makes up an estimated 95 percent of all cases nationwide. Dr. Peter Hotez with the Baylor College of Medicine says Omicron may not be as severe as Delta, but it is spreading faster. Well, it clearly is more contagious, more transmissible, and it looks like it's reaching levels that almost approximate measles, which is really the most uh, common, trans highly transmissible virus agent we know. What we'll see is this wave of Omicron will ultimately be as serious and dangerous as previous waves. As new COVID cases topped 1 million, COVID hospitalizations reach more than 100,000 nationwide, numbers on par with last summer's Delta surge. And now, COVID cases in kids are higher than at any point in the pandemic. Only 33% of kids 5 to 17 are fully vaccinated. More than 325,000 pediatric cases were reported for the week ending December 30th. And hospitalizations are at the highest they've ever been, 672 a day, a 114% increase since last week, all as kids head back to school. Dr. Mary Suzanne Whitworth of Cook Children's in Fort Worth, Texas, has watched as more kids are admitted to her hospital, a majority of them unvaccinated. Over the last two weeks, they've tripled and quadrupled in numbers. It's been a rapid rise. The number of patients isn't the only concern. The surging number of cases means healthcare workers are also getting infected and can't report to work. And that's the danger point of Omicron is that one two punch of people still coming into hospitals and not enough health care providers to take care of them. With the holiday weekend over, people from California to Texas to New York are waiting in long lines to take a rapid or PCR test if they're available. I spent two days trying to find a place. Because of surging cases, more than 215 school districts across the country have switched to remote learning. And there might not be any classes in Chicago on Wednesday if the teachers union votes tonight to refuse to go to work for in-person classes. Lane, that is the nation's third largest school district. Omar Villafranca, thank you. For more, I want to bring in Dr. Hiral Tipperneni. She is an emergency and medicine physician. Uh, doctor, welcome. The challenge, you know, for so many Americans has been how to keep themselves and their families safe while continuing on with their day-to-day -day activities as best they can. What is your advice? Well, thank you for having me, Elaine. Uh, certainly, this is a very worrisome time, as your prior segment showed. The number of Omicron cases is skyrocketing everywhere. It's not just in one part of the country, it's everywhere. And Arizona is certainly no exception. We've had, uh, it just in the last 24 hours, added 14,000 cases. On the average, we've had about 6,000 uh, averaging over the last seven days. So this is here. It is causing uh, a lot of challenges for healthcare workers, for our hospitals, for uh, first responders everywhere. As your prior segment also mentioned that we have children going back to school after their holiday breaks, after seeing family or after flying. So all of this is uh, is adding and uh, increasing the number of cases we're seeing. And, and although we're hearing that uh, for the most degree, for most healthy people, and certainly the vaccinated people, they may not have as severe of a case of uh, the symptoms related to this COVID infection. It is still very important because our community transmission rates are high. And we know that this means that all those folks who are very vulnerable, uh, our elderly, our immunocompromised, all those folks, they still have a very high risk of serious complications. 
Well, the Omicron variant was first reported in the U.S. just over a month ago. It now accounts for an estimated 95 percent of all cases nationwide. As a physician, are you alarmed by this? And how do you think it could be impacting those who are unvaccinated? Yeah, it's absolutely a big concern. And, you know, what is really worrisome is the fact that our community transmission rates are so high. And, and the fact that Omicron, we know, is much more easily transmitted, it replicates, uh, it sound, it, the, the data shows that it replicates much more quickly in the, in the nares, in the, um, in the nose. Uh, so even if it's not causing more serious infections uh, necessarily to vaccinated folks, it is still spreading more rapidly. And what we know is that the regular measures still work, though. We know that masking works. We know that vaccines are still protecting us. We know that vaccines are still responsive to this variant. So all the usual public health measures that we know about, we still have to continue to implement. And we know that there's a lot of fatigue out there and people are getting tired of it. But this is still very much the thick of things. And we are at a very uh, serious point here where hospitals are incredibly uh, overloaded with patients. They are understaffed. It is a cr critical point. And think about it, it's not just COVID cases. That means that you are impacting the care rendered to people coming in for car accidents or heart attacks or other infectious diseases, uh, regular trauma cases. All of those people are being impacted by these high numbers of Omicron cases all across our nation. Well, the Biden administration is buying 20 million treatment courses of Pfizer's COVID pill. How could this play a role in the fight against COVID-19? Yeah, this is a great uh, move by uh, the Biden administration and certainly an important investment that they're making. They are securing over 10 million uh, courses of this uh, Pfizer medication called Paxlovid. And it uh, it definitely is a big game changer uh, and a big point in favor of those folks who are very vulnerable to serious infection. We're talking about, again, the elderly, those folks who are in the nursing homes and extended care facilities. We're talking about immunocompromised patients, patients who are at very high risk for complications and serious disease. This is something else in our arsenal to fight the disease, to help them with their symptoms, and to hopefully prevent further complications such as long-term COVID and also to prevent death. This is not a replacement by any means for the vaccine. This is just another adjunctive uh, form of therapy for those folks who are particularly vulnerable to COVID complications. And, Doctor, new research on animals suggests Omicron could cause less damage to the lungs compared to earlier variants of the virus. Why might that be? Well, you know, all these variants that we have seen, um, there's usually something distinctly different about them, whether they are higher, uh, there's a higher rate of transmission, of transmissibility, a higher rate of replication. Some of them are more virulent, some of them are less so. Um, so that is certainly good news that the replication and the damage potentially to the lungs is less so. I don't think that jury is fully out, though, on that. And I certainly don't think anybody should be taking Omicron infections lightly. And remember, those folks, again, that are still most vulnerable, remain most vulnerable, our elderly, our immunocompromised, those folks with chronic illnesses, lung disease. And don't forget, we still have almost three quarters of our children um, that are still not fully vaccinated. And certainly every child under the age of five is vulnerable. So this is still very important, uh, still very concerning. Nobody should sort of, you know, be uh, taking this lightly. Um, but it is good news that it is less severe. But remember, because of the increased number of cases, we are still overall still seeing a large number of folks going to the hospital, being critically ill, requiring hospitalization, and that is still draining our our resources, and it's still a big concern for all of our communities. Such a critical point. Dr. Hiral Tipernani, doctor, thank you very much. Thank you.